Um, and I, like I said, I'll ask one more and then we'll throw it to whoever's in line first. Um, the, you have this, one of the things that strikes me about the film is it's your first film and yet you've got this incredible cast. Um, and maybe the one unknown about you as a director, because you obviously have, your, I mean, you also edited the film and, and you've done editing before, so you were probably pretty confident about your <laughs> ability to, you know, put a shot together and edit it, but working with actors is kind of a new thing for you. And then you've got these seasoned uh, people, great actors. How, how do you think you did with actors and, and, and how did you do, and what did you learn from working with actors who have this much history? Yeah, I mean, that was a mystery for all of us, you know, and the risk I think the producers were taking. Um, and, you know, it turned out to be really one of the most uh, interesting uh, and lovely parts of the experience. Um, I think part of it is because uh, the generosity of all of those actors, you know, they uh, cared about the project. They were not doing it for money. You know, we didn't have a lot of money. They were doing it for a certain kind of uh, belief in it. And, and yeah, I mean, it was really collaborative and beautiful. And they brought so much of their own wisdom to all of those parts. You know, they really deepened this sort of world um, on paper, you know, and, and it was, a, you know, just to even see them do their work and the craft of an actor was, uh, really made me appreciate that uh, craft. I mean, I, I think I've always appreciated it, but seeing it happen, seeing them take these sort of words that uh, I'd written and really their own take on it, their own dimension to it was really beautiful. And this film is not this film without them, you know, um, I think, you know, Haley and, John are really the soul, you know, if this film has a soul, it's, it's them, you know, so. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I love, Usually it takes a while to get a line. I out. love Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. We're not shy. Okay. Uh, all right, so thank you for that. That was a really interesting debut feature. Um, so I, too, became familiar with your work through some of your video essays and through your work with the Criterion Collection. Uh, and. One director that I kept thinking about when I was watching this, and also I did a lot of digging to looking at some of your other interviews as well, and I don't think you ever made a video essay, or and personally in my reading have never heard you really speak about the work of Michelangelo Antonioni. And uh, when I think of uh, directors sort of using the setting to inflect the entire mood of the film, uh, and also in terms of the characters, being, uh, you know, not just characters, but almost objects in the frame uh, yeah. of the image. Uh, so I'm wondering if, first off, you could speak a little bit about either Antonioni or just your general influences for this film. Yeah. Uh, and secondly, uh, I hope that I'm right in this, <laughs> because if I'm wrong, it'll be very embarrassing, but I believe that you started out, or you were either working on or finished a dissertation on Ozu's films. Uh, so I'm just wondering if you could say a thing or two about how your experience in academia, because this film is so unapologetically in, uh, intellectual, so I'm just wondering if you could talk about how your experiences in academia have inflected your, career, your yeah. sort of career as a filmmaker. Thanks. Okay, yeah. Give it up for Chicago Cinephiles, <laughs> man. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is... Some uh, questions and writing. Yeah, yeah. That right. that, I mean, that's question one. I, I, <laughs> I feel like I should leave. Uh, <laughs> Basically, oh, wow. just yeah. Antonioni, Ozu, go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Antonioni is a huge influence on this film. Uh, um, his sense of space and place and architecture, you know, I mean, he is one of the great filmmakers in which, no matter what film he makes, um, He's sensitive to space uh, as a, a part of his cinema. Um, and you're right, I've never done a project on him. In some ways, it's, it, it's because that kind of filmmaking is hard for, you know, to dissect in some ways. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, so Antonioni is a big influence. La Ventura is, you know, big. Um, and Ozu, you know, um, yeah, I mean, he is a profound influence, and, and I couldn't, uh, and I'm unabashedly uh, influenced by him, and not just intellectually, but really existentially. You know, I, I, he has, uh, yeah, his, his cinema has affected me, and it's why I want to make films, you know. Um, and um, 
And you know, and the question really wasn't just about his cinema, but the possibility of an alternative way of being modern in this world that I thought his cinema offered, you know, a really meaningful way of being modern. And, and a lot of this film is, is about that, you know, it's trying to understand that. Um, I hope that the film is not purely intellectual. I mean, part of that film is also a resistance to um, intellectualizing like architecture, you know, there's this constant move like, uh, and, and, and in fact, I think Jen is trying to protect Casey in some ways. And I, I think when I became an academic, an almost an ac accidental academic, you know, I started losing some love for it as I was dissecting it and really murdering this thing that I love so much, you know, which can happen. I mean, some academics are much more elegant than I am and, and great at it. And I, I just was not so, you know, I, I, I was feeling like, um, maybe lost in my, my dissection of it, you know. Um, so, uh, but yeah, but, it, but no doubt, it, those questions are infused in this film. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I thought this, this film reminded me a little bit of Red Desert in just the visual interest, beautiful film, yeah. and then economy of dialogue. So there's a real economy of dialogue oh. in this film. And, you, know, I, I, you never get a chance to ask, or at least I don't, artists about if they saw what you see, because oftentimes artists don't. Mm -hmm. People will take different things. But there was a the scene. I think it's in a, it takes place on a covered bridge, and it's sort of a, a reversal. It's a dialogue between Casey and Jen, yeah. and it's it, it struck me as a reversal of you know. There's a I don't think it's stereotypical. There's definitely in Asian culture. I think a little more appreciation for parents. And, mm -hmm. Um, than maybe in Western culture. And but it was sort of flipped because he is very much estranged from his father and she's telling him, you know, you, you can't be a stranger. And then he walks away from her. And, and it's, it, it's very interesting. It's a beautiful scene because he, he walks away from her and it kind of fades. He's fading in clarity. And then it cuts to a scene inside that factory. I don't know what kind of factory that was beautiful, like a box yeah, factory yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, hard work. Well, it, sort of, it, it struck me as a comment, Terry, a little bit of um, the estrangement of, you know, industrial society. And I don't know if you saw that. That's, that's how I sort of took it. Um, I don't know. But anyway, absolutely stunning film. And obvious that you're very much affiliated with Criterion Collection. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the industry of Columbus and the working class world of Columbus was like, I wanted it to be integral to, to the story. I hope people don't feel pressure to <laughs> like ask these, yeah, these really deep and thoughtful questions. Uh, but yeah, yeah, no, but that was really, um, that was really important to, to the story. So thank you for asking. Hi, uh, thank you. Again, uh, I don't think this one is as questionable. Uh, but uh, growing up in in a community maybe similar to Columbus, maybe not so historically um, well known as Columbus, um, how did you base the character of Casey from? Because I feel not even in terms of parent, uh, like daughter and mother but also community and, and uh, character. And I, I really connected with Casey throughout the film, so I was just wondering where was your basis for Casey or inspiration for building this character? Yeah. Can I add something to that question? Sure. Just to, I think it's gonna have the same answer, but I love that you've created a character who grows up in a small town, and it, the, the, it's become almost cliche at this point in any movie that a person from a small town just wants to leave. And you've created someone that doesn't want to leave, that likes it there, and loves the history, and love. And uh, thank you for doing that <laughs> because that's because I, that almost never happens, even though she does leave. But uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, at, but at least she puts on a good front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was that. That's a really good point because I think it was really built on her um, connection, both to the town and to her mother. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it was this sort of reversal of like wanting to leave the small town, but but really almost afraid of leaving because it was a kind of death for her. You know, I, I knew that this film was going to start out where we would 
think, oh, it's going to be about the death of this father. Does he die or, or does he you know, live? But I, I knew that the shift was going to be really it's about this small death of a daughter and a mother. And is she willing to separate, you know? And so the character was very much built around um, this, this feeling of an obligation and love for her mother. Um, yeah, and, and, yeah, and building it, I think, within that community. You know, not to deride a small town or to, you know, to say that that's always a place to leave, but um, yeah, yeah. But, but that's a big question of when, when do you leave and when do you separate, when, yeah. Hi. Um, very beautiful movie. Uh, for a debut film, this is stunningly beautiful. So I was, uh, I want to, um, if you could talk about your approach and inspirations for the composition of the shots in this film, because I think it really um, follows like the mantra of like every frame is like a photo, still photograph or a painting. So if you could talk about that, that'd be appreciated. Thank you. Um, yeah, for me, and I know that it's not everyone's taste, you know, sometimes it might feel too composed and, you know, there's uh, people like the handheld and, and I understand why people might like that. But for me, you know, I, I was really wanting to make a, a film that uh, I would want to see. And, I, and when uh, there is something about, I mean, the reason why I like Ozu in some ways is his frames are so like distraction is removed, you know, it's so, it, it, it makes me lean in uh, to every shot and I start finding myself more attuned and paying more attention and it was definitely something that we talked about and yeah, and we were pretty meticulous about things that might be a distraction to that space. Now, sometimes overcomposition is its own distraction and I understand that, but we were, we, we knew that space mattered to us. We knew that we were gonna stay on that space. We were gonna cut away from it quickly. Um, so yeah, you know, like we were turning bottles and you know, pulling grass that seemed a little too high for us and all kinds of things. So it was really um, trying to own that space and say, um, you know, I, you know, whatever we present, I, I know for me, and part, part of this is me as an editor, you know, I know, um, I always hate having to edit, like having a utilitarian shot that you know has to exist, but it like, I hate it, you know, and I just wanna, I don't want it to be in the timeline, I want, or I wanna get, you know, and I, I thought, God, I wanna love every image that we shoot. I want it to stay on there forever, if, you know, so that was a real, I, mean, I don't know if we accomplished it, but we were pursuing that. Yeah. 